What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here and in today's video we're modeling something really fun and that is the imprint. So this is the imprint, I'm not going to talk too much about it, I think it's pretty self-explanatory, it just looks so cool and the first time I saw it I thought well how do we do something like this in Revit and that's going to be the topic of today's video, we're modeling this inside of Revit. Uh, now before we get started, if you're interested in creating complex shapes such as what were this one that we're going to be modeling today. Uh, this can only be done uh, through something that I consider advanced modeling and that is with conceptual massing. Now I have an entire course on conceptual massing, I'm going to link it up just below this video in the description and then also up in the cards above. It's on my website balkanarctic.com, that, that's where I host all of my advanced courses where I go kind of slowly step by step and explain all of Revit's topics in depth uh, for, and of course there are project files to follow along and, and so on. Uh, I have courses for beginner, intermediate as well as advanced level users, so if you're serious about becoming a pro in Revit, that's definitely the best place to go. Uh, also there you can find my customized Revit templates, you can find some really high quality Revit families and there is a plugin too. Also, before we get started, make sure to like this video, it helps me out a lot, and also make sure to subscribe, not only does that help you not miss any of my future videos, but it does make the alpaca happy, and well, that's why we're all here. Okay, now let's jump into Revit, and here we are at Revit's home screen, so I'm just going to go here to models, I'm going to go to new, and then for the template file, uh, let's use my architecture design template, that's one of the templates that's available on my website. So anyways, this is just the starting view, so I am just going to quickly go to the 3D view, let's get rid of the starting view for now, and then uh, let's create just a big wall here. So I'm going to go with the exterior wall, the regular one, just like that, and then I'm just going to extend it a little bit, make it a bit higher. Okay, uh, and now I like to add something for reference. So uh, here, if I just drag this over, you can see that this is kind of like a corridor, you can walk through this. Now I want to model something similar, but uh, let's say that I want to do this for an entrance, so I want to have a door here. So I'm just going to add a door here just for reference, kind of for scale, so I know kind of which dimensions I'm working with. So I'm just going to go here to, the, to a door, and let's use a double door like this one. Okay, place it there, perfect. So how do I plan on creating this shape? Well, as I've said in the beginning, I am going to be using ma the massing environment, so if I just bring this image over here for a second, see these vertical lines here that are part of the panels? I want to create grids, so uh, or not grids, but reference planes, vertical reference planes that are kind of following this shape, and then on each of those reference planes I can host a profile which follows this kind of wavy structure, and then I can create a blend in between those shapes or those profiles, and then I generate this shape. Now, if that doesn't make sense, don't worry, I'm going to be explaining everything kind of step by step in this video. I just want to give you kind of the general approach or the workflow for this. Okay, so the next step is going to be to go to the south elevation. Here we can see our door. Let's go to a medium. Uh, level of detail. Okay, so first I like to sketch things out. So I'm going to go here to the model line tool and then I can pick a work plane where I'm just going to uh, pick this uh, pick this wall face. Did I do that? Yes I did. Okay, now let's go to the spline tool and then I'm going to start from here then go up, 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 up and then I can go down something like that, there we go, perfect, go to modify, perfect. Okay, so now obviously I can just adjust it a little bit, gonna make it follow that shape, that's the shape that I want to see. Okay, so let's say that this is the shape that I'm, uh, that I'm looking for and that I'm happy with. There we go, I think this looks pretty cool. Okay, so once we have the kind of initial shape, so I can actually select both of these and move them a bit towards the center. There we go, perfect. Okay, so once I have the entire kind of shape laid out, uh, what I'm going to be doing next is adding those reference planes. Uh, but before that, let's actually mark out the top of this. So currently, 
I, we have something like this at the bottom side, but I also want to kind of sketch out the top of this just so I know kind of where the uh, where the boundaries are. So let's do that again. So model line, uh, spline, and then I can start off from the same point, kind of like that. Then I can have like a few of these here, and then we can perhaps stop somewhere like that there we go perfect and then of course you can move things around a little bit just to gonna nudge it in the correct position perhaps move it just a tad bit down there we go I think this looks nice okay so once we have the outline in place now it's time to start adding the reference planes now more of these that you add the better the thing is going to look so that's that's kind of the rule of thumb I'm not going to add too many because then the, just the process takes uh, way more time so you're kind of trading pre precision for time obviously if you're doing this for uh, like a big serious project you would invest the extra time this is just a tutorial so I'm just going to keep it quick so let's Let's first name this reference plane number one and what that's going to do is when I copy it so let's copy it multiple times so when I copy it here for example this one is going to be called number two so it's just going to remember that naming convention and it's going to do that for us so let's add one here one here one here one here and then yeah, I think this should work. We might have to add an additional one later on, but for now, I think this will be more uh, than enough. Let's make this a bit towards the middle. Perfect. Okay, so this was one, this is seven. Okay, perfect. And then let's add some sections. So I'm just going to run a quick section here, and then I'm just going to flip it to the other side. I'm going to make it small. So this is just kind of the, how far it goes. And then I'm just going to move it out a little bit until it's just capturing that reference plane. Uh, now this is going to be section number one. So here, as you can see, the name is section number one. So now when you come to this section and when you copy it, uh, it's again going to keep the same naming convention. So this is going to be section two, section three, section four, five, six, and then seven. So if I select this one, it's section seven, so it's basically the same name as the as the reference plane, and that's what we want to see. Uh, and then finally, one more thing, I want to be able to see where this line is at the intersection of the reference plane for each section. So I do that by going here to the reference plane, and then here I can kind of mark it out like this. I know this one is at the bottom. Here I can go like that. So you just go through the intersection and then through the section, if that makes sense. Uh, now, of course, you don't have to be too precise here. So you just kind of want to have them kind of around that general position. So just to follow that shape. So we need one more here, here. Uh, make sure that they're all horizontal. That's important. Okay, here we have one, and then here, and I think that's it. Oops, there, this one isn't horizontal. Perfect. Is that it? Let's... Okay, this one seems horizontal. Okay, I think, I think I'm done. Okay, there we go. Okay, so uh, having completed all of these, uh, now it's time to go and create the actual massing. So for that, let's go to Massing and Site, turn on the Show Mass, go to In Place Mass, we can call it Mass 1, that's perfectly fine. And now I like to start off somewhere in the middle uh, because here you can see that the waves are most pronounced here in the middle or at the top. So let's start off with this one that's at the top. So I'm just going to open up this section. So that's section number five. So you just zoom in here and then you can see here we have two reference planes marking the top and the bottom of our shape. And then we can just go to the spline here for the work plane. We can go by name. This one is section number five. So we're working in reference plane number five, obviously. Then you just want to click OK and let's get started. So for this, I'm just going to go like that. Uh, the first one is kind of the biggest. So I'm just going to go like this and go to the bottom. Then the second one is a bit smaller and a bit pointier, I think. Uh, and then oh, we can go for the third one. And then finally for the 
fourth one. And that's it. I think that's it. Okay. Now let's do it like this. I think this looks fairly good. Uh, now, don't worry, you don't have to kind of go slowly step by step for each of these because now we can copy this one. So let me show you how that works. So once you have one of these in place, what you can do then is just select it. You go here to the copy, so clipboard, you go to copy to clipboard, you go to paste, and then you align it to the same place. Now, once you do that, it's just going to duplicate the same line in the same place, and then you can go here to the uh, host and change it from reference plane number five to reference plane number four and now it's here so now I can just open up my section four here we go and then I can just adjust it so here I can move it up and then I can go to scale from here to here and then scale it down to here perfect so it's going to job done in a lot less time. So again, now I have to go here to copy to clipboard, paste, align the same place, and then turn that into reference plane number three. Perfect. Uh, and again, now we open up section three. Now here already, I want to kind of start fading this away. So as soon as I kind of move it and scale it into position, I'm just going to adjust it a little bit. So just bringing the peaks down just a tad, so just like this. Not too much, not too little, so just kind of like that. There we go. Okay, so uh, this one's number three. So then let's go back, select it again, copy, paste, align to same place, change it to reference plane number two. So it's getting a little bit repetitive, but that's okay. There is not too much work. And then again, we just move it down here. We scale it in place like so and then we just kind of make the make the waves smaller so this one should be even smaller here this one too oops perhaps like that and then this one we can even flatten this one if we want there we go so here it only has like these uh, three waves okay and now finally we copy paste uh, align to the same place, change this to reference plane number one, and then on number one, when we go to the section here, I just want to move it in place, scale it if that's necessary. Yeah, we can scale it. Let's go. Okay. And then once we're, we've scaled it, now I can just flatten this completely. Now you might be thinking, well, why don't we just use a flat Kind of straight line. Uh, now I've tried that in the past and for some reason splines don't like to blend into straight lines. Uh, I don't know why but Revit seems to be giving me all sorts of bad results so we don't do that anymore. Okay anyways let's select this one, copy, paste, align to same place and then let's go to number six. Here uh, let's open up section number six. Okay at this point it might make sense to start and we're getting rid of these section views. Okay, so this one goes way down. So move it way down. Scale it into position. And then again, I'm just going to make these a bit smaller. Not too small, but just a little bit. Just so we are starting to fade this thing out. And we're almost done. So I know this is taking uh, a bit perhaps more than you expected, but it's slowly, it's almost done. So uh, just one more, so copy, paste, align to same place, and then let's go to seven, uh, open up ref section seven, move it down, and then again, as we did for the first one, we do the same thing on the seventh one, which is flatten this completely. So everything goes to the wall. So you just follow this, basically completely flatten that. Okay, here we have just a couple of more, a couple more of them. Okay, perfect. 
Uh, and now let's go to the 3D view and I like the way that this turned out. So now you just make a broad selection of all of these. So it should just pick up seven of these massing lines. It's not going to select these lines because they're not part of the massing environment. And then you just go to create form and it's going to generate that form. Uh, now it might not be that visible at the moment, that's okay. And as you can see here, it's not following the lines perfectly. So you would have to add more profiles to have it follow everything kind of perfectly. But for now, I think this is okay for this kind of simple demonstration. Uh, and then what you want to do is let's go here to shade it. So it is going to give us a little bit, but uh, we get kind of the full effect once we've applied a wall here. So you just go to the wall tool. Yeah, let's use the same. I think I can go with the interior bearing wall. And then you use the pick faces and then you just select that massing. And then here we go. Now you can see that it pasted it on the outside and you don't want that. So you select that wall. So you hit the escape key a few times. You select the wall and you change the location line if necessary to the interior side. And now it's going to become flattened. And there we go. Uh, also make sure to go to masking inside, turn off show mass. Now it still might show through. No, it doesn't. Okay, perfect. And then we can select these lines. We can get rid of them so you can just delete them. Now I've tried joining this thing to the wall in the past and it doesn't work for some reason. I guess it's just too complicated of geometry. So if you want to make it look nicer, uh, you can just use invisible lines to hide this. So I'm going to be showing you that. But before that, let's just delete the door. And now I just want to edit the profile of this to follow that bottom spline. Perfect. You go to split uh, with the gap or no, let's just go split with delete inner segment. If I can only find this. Okay, there we go. Here as well. Perfect. Now this should work. There we go. And now it looks like this. So as I said, if you want to hide it, uh, you can go here to modify and then to uh, line work and then just use invisible lines to hide all of the lines that you don't want to see, perhaps even this one and this one and this one. So there might be a few lines to hide here, uh, but in the end, I think this has turned out really, really cool. So now uh, we have that cool wall. Uh, perhaps with this material and this shading, it doesn't work that well. Uh, let me try to go to Manage tab and go to Materials. Or not the Materials, let's see. Uh, modify, Paint, let's just paint this side quickly. We can use something gray, like the ceiling, I don't know. Oops, that's not gray at all. Uh, default floor. Let's try that. Nope, that doesn't make it great either. So let's see. Let's try concrete. I'm just trying to kind of bring up a bit more color here or a, a, a bit more of that shape. Yeah, let's try the concrete. Nope. Okay, here we go. I think this looks really good now. Okay, that's cool. Okay, this turned out a little bit better than what I expected, but it's really, really good. So there we go. I think it's it's really similar to this. Obviously, it's not gold, but yeah, you, you get the point. I really like this. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. I hope you like the end result, and I hope you can find a situation where you can apply this workflow either to model something like this or perhaps something completely different. But uh, when you know how to apply tools creatively, you can get creative results such as this one. Uh, also, one more thing, I almost forgot, I almost ended the video. Uh, make sure to go to my Patreon page. I'm going to link it up just below this video in the description and then also up in the cards above. Uh, there you can find this project file as well as all of my other Revit project files. So that's worth uh, checking out. Thank you for watching, guys. Make sure to check out my website, BalkanArctic.com, for more uh, Revit courses. Uh, there I have over 120 hours of content, uh, and I'm adding more each week. Make sure to subscribe for more videos, and also I've added a video over there that might interest you as well.